I'm Dave and this is your Best Dual Sport Bikes slash Pennant Racing channel. There's more two-stroke stuff on Pennant than Best Dual Sport Bikes, so don't forget to go there, subscribe, and like. And I feel dumb saying that, like everybody says that, but I get it. It helps things grow, so please do that. Now, Hong Kong Fui, I like Hong Kong Fui. I know I like to wear little, car you know, little cartoon shirts, but I like those cartoons. They take me back to happy times when I was a kid. Okay, we did the first video on issues with the TBI bikes. At this point, I think the best thing to do is to understand um, what's kind of controlling the situation and causing the problems so you can make a more educated decision when you're hearing things from different people go, well, I'm not sure about that and this is why, you know, just listen to what I say, put it in your mental factory, jiggle it around, maybe it makes sense to you. If it doesn't, you can listen to what somebody else says, but I think you will find that this holds true. Now, there's three mediums in the universe. There's gases, there's liquids, and there's solids. Solid is, of course, your cylinder, your piston, your combustion chamber. Liquids would, of course, be the gasoline that's in the engine. Of course, water, diesel fuel, spit, orange juice, liquids. And then gases would be, uh, and an easy way to dictate gases is kind of things you can't see. Air, nitrogen, propane, that kind of stuff. You can't see those, really. You might be able to smell them. You might be able to see one thing kind of compared to another, but as a general rule, they're not there. Now, these two can't compress. You can push on them all you want, but they're gonna go somewhere else. So, put some liquid in a glass, put a plunger in it, push down on it, it's not gonna go anywhere. Push on it hard enough, the glass is just gonna shatter out the sides because it has to go somewhere. Push down on it, it has to go out the sides. Take a piece of aluminum, hit it with a hammer. Remember when I smashed that piston with that hammer and these two little chunks flew off? Even take a solid piece, hit it with a hammer, it's gonna might, might make a nice dent in, in it, but if it makes a nice dent, it's gonna come off to the side, right? You can't compress it without it going somewhere. Gas, the gases, like oxygen, you can. And this dude Boyle, he figured out quite a while ago that um, the pressure of the gas is inversely proportional to the volume, which means if the volume got cut in half, the pressure would double. So here, when your piston's going up, solid can't compress. Solid can't compress, so it's gonna hold everything in place. Solid can't compress. As the piston comes up past the exhaust port and there's nowhere else for that pressure to go, it's going to just get tighter, 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 and tighter. Because it is a gas, it will allow you to do that. And as the volume gets cut in half, that pressure doubled. Now, a few aspects to that. The compression on these things is already too high. It's higher on TBI bikes than it ever was before. Now, even something like my YZ250 that Sean Collier, Sean Collier used to win the 2014 and 15 um, two-stroke Grand Prix at Glen Helen in the pro class. That was my personal bike. You know, I did stuff with factory Yamaha and even Bob Oliver over there who gave me all the specs said, you know, you can't, the compression's already high enough on a YZ and it was at 185. The squish is already 70,000. You don't want it tighter. You start to do that and you're going to lose top end. It's going to detonate. Yeah, you're going to, it's just going to be too much. So that's a great realm for a comp compression, you know, and a lot of these things, 175 to 200 is a great realm for compression. You get much higher than that, you start having issues. Well, these bikes, when I had my bike stock, it was 215. When I put the base gasket, um, put a bigger base gasket in it and got the cylinder head further away from it, it went to 205. It's still too high. So the pressure is still too high. It creates more heat. Higher pressure, 
higher heat. That's basically directly proportional pressure and heat. So keep that in mind. Um, okay, I gotta regain my thinking here. Oh, so keeping that noted, you can understand why I'm a big proponent against not putting higher compression heads on things, especially if something's too high and the people that make the head inserts, that's how they make money. And they talk everybody into, you gotta use the head insert, I cut a compression, I cut it like nobody else can, it's patent pending, it creates all this atomization, you gotta get the squish tight, all this stuff, you gotta squeeze that fuel in to make the power, ah, you really don't because the tighter you make that squish now and the higher the compression it's going to be, the more you're going to lose mid and top. It's already too high and it just gets to the point where it has nowhere to go and the bikes can't rev out. They feel tight. Um, you wonder why you seize because it's hot, folks. It's extremely hot. And keep in mind that the bikes need more fuel. So if we reprogram the ECU and put the extra fuel in it mid to top that it needs. And a lot, part of the reason we put extra fuel into it is so you can add extra oil to it. And you go, huh? Well, you know, the injectors are only open for a certain amount of time and it's gonna, it's gonna flow whatever you put in there. But what burns in your motor is air and fuel, not oil. So if we open the injector longer to add more fuel to it, that's cool that richens the bike up. But if the bike's running at 60 to one and you add more oil to it, now that's running at 40 to one, you've replaced that air with, or you've replaced that fuel with oil, you've leaned the bike up because you've lowered the amount of fuel that's going through it. It's simple to understand once you figure it out. But yeah, that's how things are working. So we're basing everything off of a stock head not wanting higher compression. Well, what happens, what did we just talk about? Fuel doesn't compress. So now we have more fuel in there, it doesn't compress. That raises the compression ratio. So these guys change these cylinders, uh, these inserts here, and they'll go, God, the bike just feels tight. It doesn't really rev, rev out. Maybe they think it needs more fuel. And then I remember a few people calling going, well, I'm gonna have to send your ECU bike because the bike just has no top end now. And I said, before you do it, just put the head back to stock and try it. And, they, and then they do it and they go, oh my God, this thing rips. It's like a whole nother world of ass hauling fun. It's like that head was a waste of money and this thing hauls butt. I go, yes, I know. So now you kind of understand how that's working and you kind of understand how you can get in trouble. You know, piling a bunch of extra fuel in there, maybe raising the compression, maybe changing to a pipe that's working a little bit better, that increases the running compression. They're all things that are gonna cause issues. They get things really hot, they cause these things to seize up, and cause these things to get all this combustion by the rings because they're getting work hard and they're not sealing. Keep in mind too that if you're doing all this stuff, if you, this thing, is already losing compression because you're, you've got this blow by now. It's not staying on top of the piston and that's not normal. And it, if it's too high and it's got nowhere to go and you're trying to push it, make it go. It's, I just told you it has nowhere to go. It's either going to blow a head gasket, which there's no real head gasket for it to blow, or it's going to start going the only place it can, which is by the rings and it's not squeezing by the intake side because it's easier to squeeze around the exhaust side. Do you see how this is all kind of making sense and why we're having these problems and why we need to fix this stuff? They're, it's not hard to fix, but it needs to be fixed. So at this point, I think you have a small idea of what's going on and why the problems are occurring. Uh, I do make these things now. Um, you have six of them here. I have ones that are same as stock. I have two that are higher compression. I would only do that because people that go to really high elevations, 13,000 feet, but also I have two that are lower compression and that's what we want. And you know, these things are only 60 bucks. So if you spent more than 60 bucks for a good dumb, well, you got kind of burnt there. They'll be on the site soon. So I'm going to wrap this one up now. And then the next video, all the little weird things like uh, 
how these things leak and suck air and cause the bikes to run lean. Ugh, don't want that. Well, thanks for watching. Hope you have a great night, and I will talk to you soon.